Hello, I'm Emilia Tira from Evans Cooling Systems and I am here with Mark Pilak, owner of the American Muscle Car Museum here in Melbourne, Florida. Mark, this is quite a collection you have here. How did it all begin? Uh, it all began when I was a little child. Uh, growing up as a little kid, I always collected matchbox cars, the little miniature cars. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I was five years old, I was helping my dad out there changing oil and putting spark plugs in cars, uh, helping my older brother restore his old cars. He had a 32 Ford. He had an old Corvette, and then so I, I grew the passion as I, I got older. I had an uncle that had a bunch of junkyards, so we always had free source of, of any types of used parts to restore vehicles, yeah, and, and so yeah, very low cost, and I just put the labor into it, and so I always had cars. I always loved cars. I, growing up as a kid, um, that was my dream to, you know, have automobiles. That's wonderful. And what was your first car? <coughs> My first car actually was a hand-me-down from my parents. Uh, we grew up in a relatively poor family. Uh, my dad worked with five kids. My mom yeah. stayed at home. So my dad would buy a new station wagon, drive it for 100,000 miles, hand it off to a kid when he turned 16. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I got a 1967 Ford Ranch Wagon, had 132,000 miles on it, and I proceeded to restore that car. Uh, my dad thought I was crazy. Uh, I made that car look brand new. Um, spent almost a year doing it and when I got it done my dad says you know you're gonna restore that car you're gonna take it to Boston and next thing you know they're gonna steal it <clears throat> I said oh no who's gonna steal an old station wagon <laughs> well six weeks later I was calling home and said guess what dad they stole my station <laughs> wagon and they never found it right. so the very first car I ever did was uh, stolen and never found yeah. and uh, but my first real car that I actually uh, still have is a 1965 uh, Ford Mustang GT Fastback. And is in this room? Or um, no, it's not in here. It's actually being restored right now. Oh, it is? So I restored the car back in the late 70s. I drove it for about seven years as an everyday vehicle. Yeah. And uh, now I'm actually having it restored and don't plan to be, of course, driving it in winters and the snow and yeah. salt and everything else. Oh, very nice. And uh, where did you have all these cars before the museum opened last year? <coughs> we had our grand opening in October of 2016. Uh, we did a fundraiser for breast cancer awareness with the American Cancer Society. Uh, yeah. That was a great event. Um, what we had is we had about 140 vehicles in Nebraska yeah. in a similar type smaller museum yeah. and then I had another hundred plus vehicles spread around about a dozen states in the United States. So it took uh, a lot of effort to ship all of these cars in via enclosed transport. Uh, we used reliable carriers for all of our shipping needs and, mm -hmm. and they did an excellent job and we received our vehicles with virtually no damage. Wow. So how did you decide to open the museum here in Florida and move all <coughs> the cars here? Uh, the reason I chose Melbourne, Florida is kind of, um, Florida is a great state. It's a great tourist state. Uh, Florida has a large car culture, large car population. So it's a, an ideal state to put a, a muscle car museum in. Uh, there's a lot of individuals here with all types of beautiful automobiles. There's a lot of uh, premier car shows that occur here in Florida. And Florida is a, a state where you can do car activities year round. It's not like coming from the Northeast where I grew up where you know your car activities are limited to only like a three or four month season because of the, the cold weather and snow. No snow in Florida. Oh, that's beautiful. And what have been the greatest successes to have the um, museum? <clears throat> I would say that the greatest successes we have uh, have been being able to give back to the community. Uh, we've done already 20 different nonprofit fundraisers. Uh, we've raised over a million dollars for local charities. Uh, that money helps out a lot of different charities and a lot of different people. Uh, another great aspect nice. is we've met great people. Uh, we've met the President of the United States, we've met the Governor, the Senator, the Congressman, several um, you know, mayors from all over the United States. Uh, so the people we've met from the very highest level to the very lowest level have all been great people. So um, car people are typically um, car loving good people and so we've met a lot of great friends and, and you know great people and very pleased. Nice. greater uh, interest or uh, audience comments? I would say when people come through the front showroom, uh, people are initially amazed. Um, you come into the front showroom, you see eight Ford GTs, one of every color. You see a beautiful 1966 427 Cobra right behind us on the center turnstile. Uh, people come in and they see the bright colors, the beautiful candy apple reds, the yellows, the oranges.
is the blues. Um, and as you proceed through the museum, the cars that attract the most attention are the bright colored vehicles, yeah. typically bright colored convertibles. A uh, good example, I have a 1959 Ford Galaxy 500 retractable. Uh, beautiful color combination of geranium and gunmetal gray. Uh, when people see that car and we have it in the open position as the top would actually fold down so people could see how the retractable hard top works, people are amazed. Even if you're not a car lover, people see those beautiful colors. We have ladies that come and say, oh, I need a purse that color. Oh, that's the dress, that's the color of the dress I need for Helen's wedding coming up. So, oh so the people really love the bright colors. Yeah. And so um, there's something here for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. And on a basic <coughs> maintenance level, how do you keep all these cars in such pristine condition? Uh, the vehicles in the collection are all kept in running condition. On an annual basis, we actually run the vehicles. Uh, yes. We go ahead, change the oil and filters. We address any types of issues that the car may have, whether it has a check engine light, or if we have a, uh, a bad exhaust pipe, or whatever the case may be, we'll address those. Uh, on a quarterly basis, we go ahead and keep all the cars charged. They're batteries are fully charged and some of the newer vehicles we have to keep on a continuous battery tender yeah. uh, to keep the battery fully charged to keep all of the electronics within the vehicle fully charged. Yes. And I know that you use Evans waterless coolant. Why do you use this product in your cars? Um, we use Evans waterless coolant here in the museum because of the corrosion problems. Okay. Um, even though we have a great number of vehicles that have ultra low original miles, we have over 62 vehicles with less than 100 original miles, mm -hmm. we've seen cars with less than 100 original miles have significant corrosion. Um, just because the car still looks brand new doesn't mean internally it is still new. And so even though we change the oil and filter on an annual basis, uh, we found that we have a lot of corrosion problems with the older standard types uh, antifreeze. Yes. So so by switching over to Evans Waddle and Coolant, uh, we're addressing that corrosion problem. And so we're in the process now of switching over all the vehicles in the collection. Uh, since we have 280 vehicles, we're not going to be able to switch them over overnight. Right. Um, that's something you can't do immediately. But we're doing typically about one to two vehicles a week that we're switching over to the Evans Waddle and Coolant. Nice. And been very pleased with its performance. That's great. And do you drive many of these cars? Um, <coughs> I actually have about 30 plates that I have for vehicles that I can actually drive. Mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle right behind you, that yellow Ford GT, that has yeah. a plate on it, so yeah. we could take it out for a, a quick spin if you yeah. uh, want to yeah. say that. Of course, we have a lot of uh, utility trucks right here because of the hurricane damage, yes. uh, but, but that's a vehicle that we have a plate on, and so, um, you know, whether it be new or old vehicles, I have uh, several vehicles that I could take out to drive. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Any other thoughts you would like to share with everyone? Um, I just wanted to say uh, a comment. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I want to thank everybody for supporting Evans Waterless Coolant. It's a great product. It's something new and innovative, and technology is the future. And Evans is on the cutting edge of technology from a coolant system perspective. So I highly recommend Evans Waterless Coolant. Thank you very much, okay. and I thank you for thank having you. us here.